Well, first of all, a bit uh, to the background. There was a term uh, that um, uh, goes participatory revolution, which has been coined already in the 1970s by the German uh, so sociologist Max Kase. And he saw the um, increasing use of all kind of um, citizen participation tools like initiatives, petitions, all offline of course, there was no internet at that time. And he al already said that is, uh, the whole uh, development goes into a um, more participatory um, um, uh, society. From seen from the point now, it's um, it's not really a, a revolution, but rather a, um, a constant development, which is not which has not been uh, fulfilled in, uh, at that time now. So it's still going on. And the second thing is uh, what we are seeing is the you may call it e-participatory revolution. The use of social media, electronic pet petitions, moderated in internet discourses and the like and everything um, coming along with the term with the prefix open. Open data, open government, uh, open licenses, open source and so on and so forth. And what we are currently witnessing is that both of these developments are amplifying uh, mutually. So they're coming together because the second one, uh, the latter one, um, created a sort of um, technology driven participatory culture on its own. And um, there are quite interesting examples, uh, what, we can, what we saw in, in, in Germany currently. Uh, for example, um, the term Stuttgart 21. Does it, do anybody know that? It's a huge infrastructure project, a railway station in the city of, of Stuttgart, which they want to uh, put uh, beneath the earth. And there's a planning process ongoing for 20 years. And it was perfectly in line with all legal uh, requirements for citizen participation. And all of a sudden, when the citizens saw, you know, they tried to build right now, they tried to cut the trees and everything, um, they, they rose up. They really rose up. And not just an uh, environmental uh, protectionist group or something, but really the middle of the society. And they did it online and they did it offline, of course. And protest march and um, with a lot of Facebook activity, Typical for the social media use in, the, in that case, we had two opponing groups, one in favor, one against, and they are not talking with each other. other. There's no debate at all, but just, you know, um, putting forward their own arguments. And um, that had really uh, serious consequences because the politicians said, well, you know, uh, we did everything uh, okay, it's a billion uh, euro project, so just let go ahead, we don't even want to talk to all these guys. And um, the protest uh, increases and, and uh, became stronger and stronger and stronger and there were, you know, pictures like um, a 64-old uh, former teacher who was hit by a water cannon, mm -hmm. you know, losing almost his eyelight, something like that, and that was something nobody wanted to see. And as a result, the Christian Democrat lost the, the, nest, the next election in that federal state, I think, for the first time. I'm not sure, but they uh, ruled there for ages. And, but for the first time, for sure, the Green Party has the uh, minister president in place. So that had, had real uh, important um, consequences. And that sent it, uh, waves of shock through the whole political political error and through the public administration um, especially. So, how do different actors interact in e-society? Although I already focus on Germany, I still have to, to focus more because it's such a broad question and I will first uh, look at the citizens and the, the grassroots move movements. Well, there's a lot of going on, of course, in embracing, using, adapting social media. We have Three um, quite famous cases in Germany. It can be um, um, labeled as crowdsourced proofreading, citizen lobbyism, <coughs> up regulations, and cross sort agenda setting. Maybe you, you heard about that um, crowdsourced proofreading, um, which hit the Minister for Defense, Gutenberg, who was one of the political stars uh, from the Christian Democrats in Germany. 
and somebody found out that his uh, PhD thesis uh, was shot with plagiarism. Mm. And uh, <laughs> they set up, they set up an, um, an wiki, uh, it was called Frony Plug, and they worked together and crowdsourced um, the proofreading of that PhD. Mm. And it was a really an interesting development because in the first place he said, well, Ah, it's just you know minimal parts of it, and but that uh, uh, gave even more energy to that whole um, movement. And finally, it turned out it was a, a plagiar. Basically, they found on I think 90% of the pages written um, either plagiarists, um, quotes that has been referenced correctly, and so on and so forth. And he was forced to resign from office from that. And that was a big deal, and it was just uh, made by the, by the crowd. Uh, another uh, another uh, example is the CB citizen lobbyism, uh, for example. Um, citizens really tried to do what uh, huge companies used to do before. They are trying to step in into the drafting process of regulations by writing proposals for them. I mean, that, that, that method has proven for years for the big companies, you know, because um, the officers in charge are, of course, happy if they uh, get something delivered so they do not have to, to write uh, everything down. But uh, the devil, as often, lies in the details, so they are able to put something in. And there's a big movement in Germany um, which opponent, for example, against the, uh, against the so-called telecom law on the EU level, which was um, um, uh, also full of these kind of um, biased parts with little words, you know, sound harmless but uh, are quite dangerous. And they succeeded in many cases and, and have really an influence on, on that kind of regu regulations. Um, I mean, the lesson learned is citizens are already empowered in Germany. They are using these kind of tools with, uh, with a huge influence and it can't be neglected in, in no regards. So how do uh, governments use social media? I mean, and there's a, there might be a, a German, a German um, speciality because um, we are lacking behind compared to Great Britain, for example. Public administrations are very um, reluctant in stepping in in the social media and partly for quite good reasons because one big issue is, of course, data protection and privacy. That is something that might be uh, pushed on the agenda from the German perspective, also on an international level, because um, maybe because of our history, you know, all of the um, history of Germany, and um, there might be a sensitivity towards uh, this whole data. Who, who controls the data? Who's able, um, who's accountable for that? Who's able to see what happens to the data if they would send on service anywhere in the world, and so on and so forth. And also the second reason might be that, um, you know, if they are using probably that, um, you know, if they are using probably completely dependent on them. And there's one case in Germany, for example, uh, for the city of uh, Munich, which all of a sudden disappeared with their Facebook page. <laughs> and the, the official guys tried to connect, any, uh, tried to, to get in touch with anybody uh, on the Facebook company and they failed. So they complained via Twitter and via a newly set up uh, a page. The other one had uh, several min millions likes. Uh, our page all of a sudden disappeared. So that is a, another reason. Nevertheless, there are um, quite a lot activities, of course, which, which, can, be, um, which can be shown where um, social media were put into practice. But maybe the, the more interesting thing, and that is typical, might be typical German, they first thought about um, how will that lead us to? And what should we do when we embrace social media? And they started to write guidelines. One very successful guidelines has been written for the, uh, from the city of Hamburg, which 
was so success successful because it explained on the one hand uh, what is Facebook, what is Twitter, you know, everybody pretends to know what it is, but the, it turns out that the civil servants were so grateful to just have that explanation because it's embarrassing even to ask that. And on the other hand, what should we care about, what should we do um, if we really stepping in their dialogue? What if people start to, to talk to us and wanted to know things, are we allowed to answer um, how is that matching the hierarchy in the public administration and so on and so forth? And what, um, what public administrations are partly for that reason, for the criticism uh, or for the risk of coming along with the um, social media have implemented on a quite broad scale is our moderated internet discourses. These are dedicated platforms where they discuss for three or four weeks time a specific issue trying to come to a result, trying to achieve consensus where it is or at least to agree to disagree, agree where to, on what to disagree and um, that has been applied to urban planning, particip participatory budgeting, light builder and so on and so forth. Come to the recommendations. Um, well, first of all, um, my recommendation would be uh, to move away from the um, ideal that citizens are customers. That has been um, um, going around for <laughs> quite a while. But for, for several reasons, citizens, citizens are more and less as a customer at the same time, of course. And um, if you treat citizens as customers, you shouldn't be surprised if they behave like customers. And then they will compare the services of the government with Google, with eBay, and with all with Facebook, and they will discover, well, um, government is lacking behind that, so give us more. And on the other hand, they are, of course, um, already engaged, so I would recommend to, to see citizens more as partners than as customers. Embrace citizen-led service redesign. A big chance is to uh, partly use the social media to get in touch, but also the other tools like moderated internet discourses to involve citizen in designing or redesign the services. Choose the right tools for the job. There is a whole plethora of uh, different application fields and there is not one size fit all, so think very carefully what you want to achieve and which tool might be the, the, um, the best one for it. Develop st strategies before embracing social media because if you don't, uh, the risk is very high that, that government will or public administration will use that uh, channels just as another marketing tool, just to push out their message. And that is something which will not be appreciated by the uh, citizenry and by the uh, citizens. And um, last but not least, there's an important rule still for dedicated consultation platforms where they can really be sure that there's a very high priv privacy and data uh, standard um, where they also have the chance to um, go into the debate and not just into campaigns, to have uh, some sort of real de deliberation taking place. And of course, these consultation platforms can be open source and everything, but um, I think there's still um, um, it's it's a it's a need um, not just to use these other social media channels. Okay, that's thank you.